Question number two, here we go. The position of a particle moving in the xy plane is given by the parametric equation x of t equals t cubed minus 3t squared and y of t equals 12t minus 3t squared. At which of the following points x, y is particle at rest? Okay, so let's go ahead and write out our equations here. They tell us that, let me, let me fix that really quickly here. They give us the x coordinate as a function of time. So we have the position and the x coordinate as a position of time is going to be equal to time cubed minus 3t squared. Then they give us our position at y as a function of time. And they tell us that that's going to be 12t minus 3t squared. Now, we want to figure out um, at what, uh, which of the following points is the particle at rest. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out um, what time is the velocity of the particle zero. Now, the way that we can do that is, well, we know that if we have the position, so our position function here, if I take the derivative of it, with respect to time, this is going to give me my velocity, right? And I want to set that um, equal to zero, right? So what I can do is I can come over here and I will say, all right, let me take the derivative with respect to time of my position function at x. And let me do that to both sides. So I will get t cubed minus 3t squared. And then I want to take the derivative of that. So I'll get my velocity is going to be equal to 3t squared minus 6t. And I want to figure out at what time t is this equal to 0. So now I will solve for t. So I'll add 6t to both sides. And then I'll get 3t squared equals 6t. I can divide both sides by t, cancel out a t, and I will get 3t equals 6. Now I'll divide both sides by 3 and I will be left with t equals two. Okay, so that works for our x coordinate, and now I wanna do that for my y coordinate. So I will do the exact same thing. So I'll go ahead and take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. I'm just showing all the steps so you can kind of, uh, you know, see it, uh, the full thing. So I will then have my velocity and again, th this should have been my velocity in the x direction, right? So this is going to be my velocity in the y direction uh, with respect to t. And I'm going to get 12 minus 6t. Okay, so I want to set this to 0 again. So I'm going to have 12 equals 6t. I will then divide both sides by 6, and I will get that t equals 2. Okay, so whenever t equals 2, that is when... Um, the particle is at rest. It is not moving in the y or the x direction. It is Its velocity is zero. So what I'm going to do here is let me go ahead and clear some space. And I'm going to plug in t equals 2 into both of those equations, and I'm going to get the exact x and y coordinate. So for the x coordinate, I want to take my function here, so x of t, and I want it to do it at whenever t equals 2. So I'll have x of whenever t equals 2, and then I'll plug in 2. All right, and then I would know that 2, two cubed is going to be 8, and then if I subtract off 3 times 2 squared, that's going to be 12. So I will be left with negative 4. So I know that x of 2, x at t equals 2 equals negative 4. Now, if I go and look at my answers here, I can already see that this is the correct answer should be A, but I'm going to go ahead and double check both sides. So now I want Y when T equals 2. All right, so whenever I run that through, I'm going to get 12 multiplied by 2 minus 3 and then 2 squared. So when I do this, I'm going to have that Y of 2 is equal to 24 minus 12. Therefore, Y of 2 is going to be equal to 12. So our x and y coordinate is going to be negative 4 and 12, just like that. And at this point, the particle, I'll say particle at rest. Okay, so that means that, uh, yeah, A was the correct answer. We checked our work, and that is it, guys. If you have any questions, um, feel free to comment below, and I'll see you for the third question.